In this last segment, we're going to talk about random walks on undirected graphs. And to motivate this problem, we're going to talk about the, the ST connectivity problem. And in this uh, problem, consider a very large graph G. It's undirected and unweighted. Uh, this graph has n vertices and n is large. So it's a classic big data problem. Uh, it also has a lot of interesting implications elsewhere, but uh, uh, let's focus on the big data uh, aspect. You're given a source vertex S and also a sink vertex T. Okay. Now, we don't know if this graph is connected. And in particular, we don't know whether there is a path between S and T. And that's the question we're interested in. We want to know if there is a path between S and T. And this this is not uh, very difficult. Uh, we've all been through some form of algorithms course, and you've studied uh, BFS, DFS, and so it's easy to solve. But the big data context uh, comes from the fact that you're not allowed to use a lot of space. Now, if you were to use uh, BFS, you will need to have a queue of uh, up to theta of n size. And similarly, even if it's uh, DFS, you will need to have a stack of up to theta of n size. And either of these is unacceptable. And therefore, we need a solution that takes very little space. And as I alluded to, uh, this problem had, uh, has uh, very interesting complexity theory uh, implications. In particular, the question of whether uh, symmetric non-deterministic log space computation equals deterministic log space computation. This was a big open question that got resolved in uh, in the mid 2000s thanks to Omer Reingold. So this is a very famous paper but this talks about a deterministic solution and it's not a very practical solution uh, to be implemented in real world applications and so we are more interested in a solution that is easy to implement and easy to analyze and easy to appreciate. So we are interested in a random walk space solution. And what is a random walk? Uh, at each time step, think of a particle or a token that's at some vertex. At each time step, this uh, token takes a, a random uh, walk step. What that means is from its current location, uh, let's say, let's call that V, it chooses one of the DV uh, neighbors of V uniformly at random and moves to that neighbor. And each step is independent of uh, previous steps that it took. So it only depends on where its current location is and that will, um, uh, and from there, one of the neighbors is chosen uniformly at random. And so what we do is, uh, is, is, is simple. We start a random walk from S and we allow it to walk for some number of uh, uh, steps and hope that it will reach T. So, of course, if it reaches T, then that means S and T are connected. But if it doesn't reach T, well, that does that mean that S and T are not uh, connected? It might just ha be the case that, well, it, it, uh, this random walk just somehow avoided uh, T. And so we need to be concerned about that and we need to understand uh, uh, whether that will happen. And your, um, uh, from your uh, previous lectures uh, where we talked about uh, finite irreducible uh, and ergodic uh, Markov chains, you probably have some intuition that it won't miss some part of the maze. But the problem is how long does it take to actually cover the entire maze? Uh, that's important because that tells you that if you walk that long and still don't see T, then S and T are probably not connected. So that's the intuition that we're going to uh, work with. Okay. So we want to find that amount of time for which that random walk should walk before we can safely conclude uh, whether um, S and T are connected or not. And as it turns out that... Um, um, th that number of steps is 4mn cubed in order to get a confidence of 1 minus 2 raised to the minus um, m. But why is that? Well, that's uh, what we are going to delve into uh, in this uh, segment. 
And just to, in, in case you missed this point, notice that the uh, position of the token is, it can be thought of as a Markov chain. So the position is a vertex. So the Markov chain has n uh, uh, states, basically each state corresponding to some vertex in which that uh, token is present. Okay. And let's um, start delving into this uh, notion of random walks. Uh, let's look at the first lemma here. A random walk on an undirected connected graph G is aperiodic if and only if G is not bipartite. So, in other words, the graphs that are not bipartite are more interesting and if you care for aperiodicity. Let's, um, let's see how this uh, lemma can be proved. Okay. So this is an if and only if uh, statement. So the, the proof has to go in two directions. Uh, the first direction that we're going to prove is aperiodic implies uh, not bipartite. Or equivalently, let's look at the contrapositive. Bipartite implies periodic. Well, this is very easy to see because if it is bipartite, then what happens is the there are two parts to the graph and the random walk will uh, will uh, stay at one side during odd times and the other side during even times so it's quite easy to see that a bipartite graph is going to uh, a, a random walk on a bipartite graph is going to be uh, periodic so the forward direction is proved that way what about the reverse direction well this one we need to show that a graph that is not bipartite, a random walk on that such a graph, will be aperiodic. Okay, an odd uh, a, a, a graph that is not bipartite is uh, must have an odd cycle. Okay, and if there is an odd cycle, what that means is that you can uh, always go from one vertex um, you can you can find a way um, uh, assuming the graph is connected you can find a way to um, take a walk from a vertex and return to it after an odd number of uh, steps and of course you can also do even number of steps you can just go back and forth between the node and its neighbor so combining these two you can mix and match them and create um, walks of any length beyond a certain threshold and this is the crucial idea by which we can establish uh, th that with some non-zero probability uh, you can actually uh, go from any vertex to another vertex at a, a variety of different uh, time steps in other words um, the such a random walk will be aperiodic Okay, so that's the intuition. This is not a complete proof, but I want to leave you with an intuition for why this uh, statement holds. Okay. So from, for the rest of this segment, uh, let's keep things interesting. We've been interested primarily in um, uh, aperiodic Markov chains. So we're going to assume that G is not bipartite. Okay. So this means that a random walk on such a graph is going to be aperiodic. Now let's look at the stationary distribution of a random walk on a non-bipartite connected graph. The claim is that uh, the, uh, the component associated with a vertex V is given by dV over two times the number of edges. Okay, why is this? First of all, we need to show that this uh, stationary, dis uh, this, distrib this is first of all a distribution, this vector of uh, numbers, uh, quantities, is first of all we, uh, a distribution. We need to show that. Well, these quantities are going to be between 0 and 1. That's clear. What we need to show is that they add up to a 1. Okay. Uh, well, let's see how that's, uh, that's going to work. Now, if you sum up the uh, degrees, that's going to equal 
uh, two times the number of edges okay and so if you rearrange uh, you're going to get dv over 2e summed over all vertices I'm going to add up to 1. Great. So, well, but dv over 2e is nothing but uh, the uh, the component associated with v. And uh, so this is exactly what we want. So we know that uh, this vector of numbers is a probability distribution. Now we need to sh uh, show that this equation holds. This um, uh, probability distribution vector uh, times the transition matrix will give you back the probability distribution vector. That's what needs to be shown. Okay, so let's uh, look at this equation from the perspective of a single uh, vertex. So that's pi v. When you apply this matrix, when you multiply it with, by this matrix, what does that mean? Well, the pi v um, is well let's look at the, the vertex v its neighborhood uh, these are its neighboring uh, vertices and that's denoted by nv okay so in order to get this component pi v what we have to do is sum over all uh, the neighbors of v okay and take their corresponding vector components times the probability with which the random walk a, a random walk token from one of these neighbors say u will move to v and that's this quantity 1 by uh, du why is that well if you look at the uh, uh, vertex u there are du uh, neighbors and each one of them is chosen equally likely so the probability that a random walk token that's at u will take this edge and come to v is 1 over du so pi v is summation over all the neighbors uh, uh, u uh, the stationary distribution component corresponding to u times the probability with which the token will move from u to v okay that's essentially uh, what we do over here okay and cancelling these two du's uh, we will get one over two times uh, the cardinality of the edge set but then we're summing over the neighborhood of u and so we get uh, du d, dv over two times the cardinality of e okay so this is uh, this completes the proof of our claim that uh, the vector formed by these components is uh, the uh, stationary distribution of this uh, random walk and of course uh, we can immediately conclude that uh, the time the expected time for a random walk to leave v and return back to v is the reciprocal of pi v which is 2e over uh, dv okay uh, let's look at a slightly more uh, general um, hvu so let's assume that let's let's focus on an edge in the uh, in the graph okay now uh, the the expected time to go from v to u is at most two times the cardinality of e of course if you're lucky you will go in one step but what this claims is that even if you're unlucky the the expected time to go from uh, a, a vertex v to its neighbor u is at most uh, two over uh, two times e okay uh, and here's how the proof goes so um, let's look at h u u we already know that huu is 2e over du and this is what we got over here okay but there's also another way to uh, look at this okay so from u with 
probability 1 over du, we will go to a neighbor w. And from that w, we will eventually make our way back to u. And that's h w u. But then that's just the option of going to w. Uh, using the law of total probability, we can sum it over sum this up over all possible all neighbors of u. And so as a result, we get this quantity. So it's a summation over all the neighbors w. Uh, you go to this one correspond to corresponds to the one step that we take to go to w. And this h w u is the expected number of steps that we take from w to u. And this option is exercised with probability 1 over du. And this is just one of many options, well, in particular one of uh, uh, n u number of uh, options. This is the, uh, the number of uh, uh, neighbors of u. And applying the law of total probability, uh, we get this expression for h u u. Okay, so this basically this is two ways of computing h u u, and so the du's get cancelled. We'll get two uh, e equals summation w belonging to the neighborhood of u one plus h w u. And of course, one of these w's is the is the v, the the neighbor v that we're interested in. So clearly, uh, looking at this summation, uh, the expected time to go from v to u um, must be, in fact, strictly less than uh, two times the number of edges. Okay. So why did we even look at this? This is actually an interesting uh, consequence. Uh, and there's an interesting notion called the cover time. Well, you may start to realize why we're going to talk about the cover time because this may this will have a bearing on the problem that we started out with. Well, what's the cover time? It's the expected time by which a random walk has visited every node in the graph, regardless of its uh, starting point. So it's the worst case time, expected time, uh, for a random walk to have explored the entire graph. And of course, we're talking about a connected non-bipartite graph. Okay. More formally, it's the uh, maximum over all vertices in the graph. The expected time for a random walk starting at V and visiting all the nodes. Okay. The cover time of a graph uh, G equals V comma E is at most four times the number of vertices times the number of edges. This is true for any graph. For special graphs, we have uh, better bounds on the cover time. But this is true for any uh, connected uh, non-bipartite graph. Okay. So how, why is this the case? Well, consider a spanning tree of uh, G. Okay. Now, if you do, uh, if you consider the edges in uh, DFS traversal order, uh, and now you have to consider it both directions. So each edge uh, will be traversed in two directions. That ordering will have at most two times the number of edges minus one, uh, number of vertices V minus one number of edges. Okay. Why? Because the minimum spanning tree has N minus one uh, edges and each of those edges, edges will be traversed at most twice. Okay. So these are all edges in the graph. So the expected time to go from one end to the other uh, is at most 2e. So this naturally leads us to the conclusion that the cover time is at most uh, 4 times v times e. Okay. So back to ST uh, connectivity. 
we know the cover time is for at uh, less than 4 ve okay and that's at most 2 n cubed uh, because the um, uh, cardinality of the edge set is uh, n squared is less than n squared by 2 okay Let's uh, use R, the random variable R, to denote the time to reach T starting from S. Remember the algorithm? We uh, start from S. We just started a random walk, and we allowed this random walk to walk. And R is the um, now. Let's assume that the graph is connected uh, for the purpose of analysis. Um, R is a random variable that denotes the time to reach T from S um, for by this random walk. And from Markov's inequality, well, the, the, we know that the expected uh, expectation of R is uh, 2n cubed. Okay. From Markov's inequality, what is the probability that R exceeds 4n cubed? Well, that's at most a half. Okay. So if we run it 4m n cubed number of uh, times. And here M is just a parameter uh, uh, not to be confused with the number of edges because M is often used uh, to denote the number of edges. Here is just a parameter. Uh, if, uh, what's the probability that R exceeds 4M N cubed? Well, it's at most 2 raised to the minus M. So, uh, and if you make M, for example, something like log N, uh, this uh, quantity will become 1 by n so st uh, so so when s and t are connected uh, the algorithm after these 4 mn cubed uh, number of steps will uh, conclude that s and t are connected with high probability so, uh, on the other hand if it is uh, for if after 4 mn cubed number of steps you don't uh, uh, reach t then uh, you conclude that the graph is, uh, I mean, the S and T are not connected, and what's the probability with which you will be wrong? Well, that's a small, uh, at most, um, uh, 2 raised to the minus M. So that brings us to the end of uh, this series of segments. Thank you.